The second topic of our first lecture is homeostasis. So let's look at homeostasis. First, what's homeostasis? Homeostasis is not just body temperature. It's not just blood pressure. It's not your blood sugar level. It's not your body concentration of water. It's all of them. So what's homeostasis? Homeostasis is to maintain a stable environment in your body. I like the word maintain. You are able to maintain it. And your body, I like to use the word Goldilocks zone. Your body is like a Goldilocks zone. No matter its temperature, its blood sugar, its blood pressure, is your osmolarity. That's a concentration of water. Everything have a Goldilocks zone. Means it's not too high, it's not too low, it's just right. So your body temperature is just right. Uh, could not be too high. You have a fever, that's too high. And or you're freezing to death, that's too cold. So everything needs to be just right. That's homeostasis. And your body can maintain homeostasis. Means your body have the ability to be able to maintain a stable temperature, maintain a stable blood pressure, maintain a stable sugar concentration, maintain a stable concentration of water. So that's homeostasis. Okay. So homeostasis definition is ability to for the body to be able to maintain a stable internal environment even though the outside environment change. You can go to a desert, it's very dry, your osmolarity need to be maintained. You can go to a mountain, very cold, your osmolarity need to be maintained. In summer in Texas, it's very hot, your body temperature still maintained, that's homeostasis. And that's the first one, definition. The second one, in order to maintain homeostasis, you need to have a mechanism. And this machine has three parts. The first one is the receptor. The second one, control center. The third one, E factor. Each one have a job title and you could not switch them because each one uh, in this company, uh, each one have a job title. So they have different job. You need to know which one is which receptor. Second one, control center. The third one, E factor. So for example, to maintain body temperature, you need to have a receptor detect your body temperature. And you have a control center. Usually your brain, sometimes your uh, endocrine cells can be the control center, response to it. And then you have E factor. E factor is one response. Uh, like in the summer, uh, it's pretty hot, you sweat. So E factor, that's your sweat gland. That's one response. So three parts. The first part, uh, receptor, they pick up change. You have a lot of receptors. So these are the receptors, the one on the left. Uh, you have the receptor for smell, for taste, for eyes, uh, for visions. You're able to see and also you're able to hear. Uh, these are the receptors that pick up the physical stimulus, detect change. So you have receptors pick up each different stimulus. Uh, when you go to AP1, uh, you will learn all of them. This receptor pick up change. And the pick up change sends the information to the control center. Control centers are the one receive information. Usually it's your brain. But we say it's your CNS. CNS means central nervous system, brain and spinal cord uh, together. It's called your CNS. That's your control center. That's your control center. Uh, you touch something hot, you move your hand back immediately. And that's because you have your spinal cord. So that signal actually go to the spinal cord. So control center, your brain and your spinal cord. And sometimes you will see the endocrine cells they are control center as well. Like to maintain your blood sugar level, your pancreas, the endocrine cells release insulin. 
uh, to lower your blood sugar and your pancreas endocrine cells, we call them beta cells in the pancreas. They're actually control center as well. So control center usually is your CNS, central nervous system, include your brain, your spinal cord. Sometimes it could be the endocrine cell. Now let's look at the E factor. E factors are the one response to the control center. Uh, in order to, you touch something hard, you move your hand back. Okay, well, the effector, that would be a skeletal muscle. And the effectors, you control your blood pressure. Okay, the effector will be your heart. So effector is one response. And in the summer, it's very hot. Uh, you sweat. Sweat glands is the effector. So totally, you have three. You have the receptors pick up the stimulus. You have control center, integrated information, and you have effector response. And if one of them is not working, well, homeostasis could not be maintained. So you need all three receptors, control center, effector. And homeostasis is pretty important because you want to maintain something that's homeostasis. And when they are not working well, usually you get sick. Oh. We have people have heat shock. That's when they could not maintain their body temperature. And that's when the homeostasis could not be maintained. So homeostasis maintain more body temperature. When you are hot, body temperature is high, you sweat. Or when your body temperature is low, you shiver, you shiver. We shiver is to ask the skeletal muscle to contract. And when the skeletal muscle to contract, it mainly produces movement. That's why you can see the people shivering. But its side effect is produce heat. Produce heat. And it's like you drive a car. Your car also produces heat, even though it produces movement. And in, in this case, the heat is what we need. Uh, we want, want the heat to increase your body temperature. That's why we're shivering when we are cold. So it's not just one direction. When your body temperature is high, you can lower it. If your body temperature is low, you can make it high. And the mechanism we call it negative feedback. Negative feedback is the mechanism to maintain homeostasis. So this time we add two more things. You find, okay, the main loop require receptor, control center, effector. We talk about these three. And then the stimulus is the physical stimulus to the receptor. Like if you detect body temperature, okay, temperature is the stimulus and receptor detect the temperature. And you have a control center, you have E-factor, and finally the response. That's the response produced by the E-factor. So here we use the maintain blood pressure as an example. So when your blood pressure increase, you have receptor. Uh, we pick up the blood pressure. We call them barrel receptor. Uh, in AP2, you will learn the barrel reflex to maintain the blood pressure. You have receptor in your aorta and carotid artery. These are the receptors in the big blood vessel. And they will send information in your control center that's in your brain. And then you have effector. Uh, effector, this one will go to your heart, decrease the heart rate, and response is blood pressure decrease. So that's negative feedback. And negative feedback is the mechanism to maintain homeostasis. So when it increase, you can decrease. And if you decrease, you can increase it up. So we talk about the blood pressure. Now let's look at the maintain blood sugar. After you eat a big meal, your blood sugar level start to increase. And then your pancreas, this one is your integrating center, endocrine cells. You will release insulin. And insulin's job is to decrease the blood pressure. So the ins insulin's been released and its job is to decrease the blood pressure. It will ask your skeletal muscle to take the blood sugar back. And when you take the blood, blood sugar in, your blood sugar level decreases. So it's a negative feedback loop.
and your body have a lot of mechanisms to maintain maintain blood sugar, maintain body temperature, uh, maintain maintain your osmolarity. That's the real water level to maintain this, maintain that. That's negative feedback. So your body have a lot of negative feedback loops. Then your body have a few positive feedback. So what's positive feedback? It's not homeostasis because positive feedback is say, well, okay, if you see someone use microphone and when they come too close to the speaker, you hear a loud, sharp noise, that's positive feedback. So positive feedback is, it's getting worse and worse, getting bigger and bigger. So it's not stable. That's why it's not homeostasis. So during the test, if I ask you, okay, both positive feedback and negative feedback contribute to homeostasis, you know that's wrong. Only negative feedback contribute to homeostasis. So what's positive feedback? We still need it because in some situation, we need positive feedback. So my suggestion is to know those positive feedback loop. You only need to know three. In your body, we have three. Those three, the first one is giving birth, like this one. So only happens in female. Start from the uterus contraction, and the uterus contraction uh, will, will get him harder and harder, also faster and faster. And that's positive feedback. And it won't stop until the baby come out. So that's positive feedback. Apparently, it's not homeostasis. It's getting bigger and bigger. Positive feedback. The second positive feedback is milk let down reflex. Also happens in female. Uh, that's when after the baby come out, uh, the baby suck the nipple. That's the physical stimulus. And it will trigger the breast release milk. The milk gland, actually. The milk gland inside the breast release milk. And you find it will come more. It will become more. So it's a positive feedback. So the baby can have more milk. Milk let down reflex. That's the second positive feedback loop. The third one you will learn in AP2 is called the blood clotting. Blood clotting. After you bleed, the platelet is the cells inside your blood. They will form the clot. And the clotting become bigger and bigger. And because it need to stop bleeding. Uh, so it's a positive feedback. In your body, you only have three positive feedbacks. My suggestion is you know these three because all the other feedback loop you learned in the body, you know they are negative, even though you did not see them because only negative feedbacks maintain homeostasis. Okay, let's stop here.